Hey everyone, what's happening? What's going on? Welcome to another video. And this is another Audi video, actually, Audi Volkswagen. So uh, thank you to my longtime BMW guys for sticking around. Um, wanted to share with you how to delete the tire pressure monitor system today um, out of the Audi. And there's a couple of reasons that you might want to do this. Uh, name, the main one, namely being that uh, the tire pressure monitors in this car are about $78 each plus mounting and dismounting the tire at each corner, um, plus the antenna in the back, which uh, has a code in my car, um, which is likely bad. The new antenna is about $158. So as you can tell, very quickly um, replacing all of those parts in order to monitor tire pressure gets expensive quickly. So for uh, the cost of nothing, because um, I got this really great scan tool, OBD11. Shout out to you guys for providing that to me with some free codes um, for credits to do long coding on this car. And basically what I'm gonna do is go into um, the module for the tire pressure monitor and we're gonna just disable it from the car. Here's a look at the Fire 7 tablet I purchased. This is an Amazon product and it has 16 gigabytes of storage, I believe and this should do the job. Um, there is some uh, messing around with the software a little bit in order to basically be able to get Google Play onto this tablet, but um, you can Google search that, how to get Google Play um, onto this tablet. And basically once that's done, we're gonna go in here and download OBD11 so we can use uh, this adapter to code out that tire pressure monitor system on the Audi. Here's a look at the tablet. Down here, we'll just navigate to the Play Store, which I've downloaded, and I'm gonna just search up at the top here for OBD11. And here it is with over 500,000 downloads. You can read a little bit about the app, look at some reviews, and I'm gonna install it. Okay, now that this is downloaded, we can open it up and check out the app. And so as you can see here, we're gonna to need to sign in and create an account. All right, once you create your account, you're gonna to have to log into your email and then verify the email. Then you'll be able to use your password and email address to log into the app. Now it looks like the next thing I need to do here is click this little green plus button and add in the VIN number of my car. Click OK. It's pretty cool. It looks like it automatically populates an image of the B7 Audi. And so this is basically what the dashboard looks like when you're using a Fire 7 tablet with Google Play installed on it. It's kind of a nice little handheld setup, actually. This is very small. Uh, it's slightly bigger than an iPhone. This is an iPhone 10 for size comparison. Now here's a look at some of the menu systems here under apps, um, comfort turn signal. Looks like you can change some of the uh, wiping settings and comfort settings. Um, here are the gauges here. Engine fuel rate, fuel injection timing, the EVAP system, all kinds of different menus to get into here. Here's our little OBD2 plug that goes um, into the OBD2 port underneath the driver's side of the car. And I'll plug that in, connect to the tablet here, and we should be in business. Okay, I have just uninstalled, reinstalled the app. Um, I've signed in here. I got my Wi-Fi connected to my hotspot on my phone. Bluetooth is turned on, ignition is on. The OBD2 connector um, is, is plugged in to the port. And let's hit connect here and see if we can get this low location, sure. As you can see, there's no way to connect. Only when it's blue does that mean there's availability to connect. 
and for some reason even though it's uh, showing right there and if I open up under here I can show you the light is on uh, for the Bluetooth adapter the ignition is on yet we're not able to connect okay guys good news after about 30 minutes of screwing around with the Bluetooth connections I was finally able to get it to reconnect and let's go in here and try to clear that tire pressure monitor system uh, for once and for all okay so first we're gonna go down here into control units and I'm gonna go into 17 dashboard and since we're doing coding you would think that we're going into coding but we're actually not we're gonna go into adaptation and for the channel looks like we're gonna to go to channel 061 so let's type that in 061 and the value it's giving us is 3843 so we're going to subtract 512 from that so let's go here to the calculator 3843 minus 512 is 3331 so let's change that new value 3331 and then hit check all right adaptation accepted so I guess I just have to hold that to save it cool all right, so I guess all there's left to do now is start the car and see if the tire pressure uh, goes away. All right, amazing. All right, guys, the tire pressure warning is completely gone. Um, it used to be right there and it looks like it's gone. Um, that is amazing really happy with the results there and um, yeah while this device has been a real pain in the butt to get Bluetooth to work um, I think that the capabilities of using this device um, are actually quite amazing with the amount of coding and different things that you can do um, and that chiming that's still going off here is the low fuel um, there's actually a problem with the fuel sender on this car as well, the fuel level, and that's why I think that's why the chiming keeps going off that, or it's the seatbelt at the moment. But yeah, overall, um, I would say uh, the experience is quite frustrating um, if you're trying to get um, the Bluetooth to connect. But once you uh, unplug everything, keep turning Bluetooth on and off a few times, uh, restart the tablet, restart your phone or whatever device you're using um, to use the OBD11, eventually you'll get it to connect. You just have to be patient. That's how you code out the tire pressure monitor system on a B7 Audi or Volkswagen. I guess it's pretty much the same across most Volkswagen and Audis. Um, these directions I actually found on the OBD11 support. They have their own uh, user forums. And basically the software here for OBD11 is pretty robust in terms of what you can do with it. But you have to understand how to use the adaptations, uh, what the right values are to put in and out of the different modules and able to do programming or coding and that's not something that I know how to do so while this is very powerful it doesn't appear that there's a lot of user manuals or support um, in terms of figuring out what exactly uh, you want to do or be able to use it for so it's sort of like having a really powerful tool but without having directions on how exactly to use it so I would rely on the forums there's audizine.com is a great one I'll link that below and then there's also 
the user support forums um, from OBD11 themselves. I'll also link that below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Don't worry, BMW peeps, we will be getting back into BMW content soon. But, you know, I have to buy this wagon for my friend and uh, we'll try to make as many videos as possible on it until I eventually sell it and let it go. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, you guys, I could not figure out how to get this connected to Bluetooth. So I had my tech support expert come out that's really my wife, Amanda. But I also had baby come out. Hi, baby. This right here is also the reason why I have not been uploading. <laughs> hmm? Right, baby? <laughs> You're taking yeah. up all Dada's time? You are. <sighs> all right, let's that's try to exciting. connect here.